Welcome to a video on setting up a double integral using both orders of integration. This video will only focus on setting up the double integrals. It will not actually evaluate them. Here we want to set up the double integrals using both orders of integration for the given function over the region bounded by y equals x squared and y equals x cubed. So in this case, I think it's helpful to take a look at the graph of y equals x squared and y equals x cubed as we see here on the right. The first thing we need to do is decide which function is on top and which one is on the bottom. And in this case, y equals x cubed is on the bottom, and y equals x squared is on top. And our region of integration is the region bounded by these two functions. Now because both of these equations are already solved for y, or they're functions of x, it'll be a little bit easier to determine the double integral if we integrate with respect to y first. One more thing before we set this up, it is important that we determine this point of intersection here. Well, x squared is equal to x cubed when x is equal to 1. So this point of intersection would be the point 1, 1. So if we integrate with respect to y first, we're going to have dy here and then dx. So our limits of integration for y must be expressed as functions of x. And that's why we decided to do this order first. The lower limit of integration for y would be x cubed, and the upper limit of integration would be x squared. And then for the limits of integration for x, we're going to start here at 0 and go out to positive 1. So the limits of integration for x will be from 0 to 1. Now let's try changing the order of integration. If we integrate with respect to x first, We'll be integrating from left to right, so we'll be integrating from here all the way to here. Again, notice that both boundaries are the two functions, but now the limits of integration for x must be a function of y. So that means we're going to have to take these two equations here and solve them for x. So again, we can rewrite this as x equals the square root of y, and we can rewrite this as x equals the cube root of y. So our lower limit of integration with respect to x is going to be the square root of y. And the upper limit of integration will be the cube root of y. And then for the limits of integration for y, we're starting at 0 and going up to positive 1. So one of the most important things to remember here is if we integrate with respect to y first, the limits of integration for y must be functions of x. And if we integrate the specs to x first, the limits of integration for x must be functions of y. Let's take a look at another example. Here's a similar type of problem. We want to set up the double integrals using both orders of integration for the given function over the region bounded by y equals 2x and y equals x squared. So it is important that we graph these two functions I've already graphed it here on the right. Here we have y equals 2x, and here we have y equals x squared. And then we also want to be able to find this point of intersection here. We can look at this graphically and determine that it's the point 2, 4. But we could also solve it algebraically if we set these two equations equal to each other. We would have 2x equals x squared, set it equal to 0, factor and solve. So x equals 0, and x equals 2. So when x is 0, we can see that y would be 0. That's that point here. And then when x is 2, notice both equations produce a y value of 4. OK, so here's our region of integration. Notice it's bounded below and above by these two functions, as well as to the left and to the right. But since these equations are already functions of x, or solve for y, we're going to go ahead and integrate with respect to y first. So our function is x plus y, and we'll integrate with respect to y first, and then x. So again, if we integrate with respect to y first, our limits of integration must be functions of x, meaning y must be solved for x. And you can see it's already in the correct form, so our lower limit of integration will be x squared, and our upper limit of integration will be 2x. And then for the limits of integration for x, that's why it's important to have this point here. We'll integrate from 0 over to 2. 
And now let's go ahead and switch the order. So if we want to integrate now with respects to x, first, our limits of integration must be functions of y, or x expressed in terms of y, which means we're going to have to solve these two equations for x. So here, if we divide both sides by 2, we'll have x equals y over 2. And here, if we solve for x, we'll square root both sides of the equation. We'll have x equals the square root of y. So now we're integrating from left to right. So again, y equals 2x is the same as. So again, y equals 2x can be expressed as x equals y over 2. And y equals x squared can be expressed as x equals the square root of y. So when integrating the specs to x, first we're going to work our way from left to right. So our lower limit will be y over 2. Upper limit of integration with respects to x will be the square root of y. And then with respects to y, we'll integrate from 0 all the way to 4. Let's go and take a look at one more example. This last example is going to be a little bit more challenging. We want to set up both orders of integration for the double integral of the given function over this triangular region. Let's start by identifying the vertices. This would be the point 0, 3. This would be the point 4, 2. And this would be the point 0, 0. Now let's go ahead and determine the equation for each side. This vertical side here would be x equals 0. This side here is on the line that passes through the origin, and the slope would be up to right 4. So this would be y equals 1 half x. This side here is on the line where the y-intercept is 3, and the slope would be down 1 and right 4. So we'd have y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 3. Notice this region is vertically bounded only by these two lines, but horizontally it's bounded by these two lines here, and then it switches to be bounded by these two lines here. So let's first integrate this with respect to y, because it's bounded vertically only by two functions. And it's also nice that these are already functions of x. So for the lower limit of integration with respect to y, we'll have 1 half x. And the upper limit of integration will be negative 1 fourth x plus 3. And then for the limits of integration with respect to x, we'll integrate from 0 all the way out to positive 4. Now let's go ahead and change the order of integration. Now if we integrate with respect to x first, we're working our way from left to right. Notice below y equals 2, the region will be bounded by this vertical line and this line, y equals 1 half x. But above y equals 2, it's bounded by this vertical line and the other line of negative 1 fourth x plus 3, which tells us we're going to have to have two double integrals if we want to integrate with respect to x first. And we also have to express the limits of integration for x as functions of y, which means we'll have to solve these equations for x. So this one here, we can just multiply both sides of the equation by 2 to get x equals 2y. Let's go and take a closer look at this line here. We'd have to subtract 3 on both sides. And then multiply both sides by negative 4. So we'll have x equals negative 4 times y minus 3. So expressed as a function of y, this would be x equals negative 4 times y minus 3. OK, so let's see if we can set this up. For the first double integral, integrating with respect to x, the lower limit of integration will be 0 all the way out to 2y. And then for y, we'll integrate from 0 to 2. And now for this upper region of the triangle, with respects to x, we'll integrate from 0 all the way out to negative 4 times the quantity y minus 3. And then for y, we'll integrate from 2 to 3. 
That's going to do it for this video. I hope you found these examples helpful.